Hey there, it's Sandra here from Create in Spain. Recently I've been doing a few projects from the Canon Creative website. It's part of the Canon Printer website. You can go on there and you can peruse lots and lots of projects. They're all free to download and they're great fun. But some of their projects I noticed have a printer's bleed on them. Now I'm talking about the 3D projects the ones that you really need to cut out very carefully, fussy cutting, or making a cut file for your machine. If they've got a printer's bleed on, basically what it means is that there is the line of the design and then there is extra ink going past that because they don't want to risk having any white space anywhere, which is all very well and good, but it makes it very difficult if you have a brother machine to simply scan it in and cut it out. Now I use concepts and the reason I use concepts for this is because it's got great tracing tools, great pen tools that allow you to trace relatively quickly and easily and you can import and export a lot of different formats and so on and it's just a lot easier to do for me than it is to do a manual trace with the light box. Oh no, I mean some of the projects I've done have had 14 pages I do not want to manually trace 14 pages on a light box. No thank you. Press the plus button for a new drawing or you can press the plus button down there for a new drawing. Now I'm going to show you what I've actually done in the settings here. Artboard size 29.7 by 21. So I have it horizontal and I've got it set up like that. And you might think, well, if you're going to be doing a vertical print, this isn't a very clever way of doing it. For some strange reason, and I know not why, when you export from here as an SVG, if I do it in portrait mode straight away, it exports it in landscape mode for an SVG. I have no idea why. But the way to get around this is to physically turn this and wait until you get 270 degrees on there and then you're fine. You're set to go. Now in the settings here, if you look at gestures, you can enable canvas zoom, that's fine. You can enable canvas rotation. I really don't like to have the rotation on. It is compatible with quite a few different uh, styluses. Obviously I've got the Apple Pencil and you can put in certain gestures and things. I'm not going to go into an in-depth thing about concepts because it's very, very involved. There are plenty of good videos that concepts have put out themselves to show you how to actually operate it and how to set it up and so on. So I'm really not going to do that. I just want you to see the tools that enable a nice, easy trace. So I'm going to import my image. Now the image that I'm importing is actually a PNG. And if you've looked on the website for the Canon Creative Park, they provide PDFs. So what I did was I downloaded the PDF and I then found somewhere where I could literally get all those converted to PNG. The reason for that is simply because Canvas Workspace does not recognize PDF files. If it did, my life would be a lot easier doing this, but it doesn't. I've got my picture that I want to trace, and I want to make sure that it is set up to A4 size. And at the moment, whoops, the size that it is showing is not A4. So if I tap on the width, I get this and I can put in my 20 centimeters and for my height, I can put in 29.7 and I can move that so that it goes where I want it to go. And I've only got 20 centimeters there for some reason. Did I tap on 20 instead of 21? Quite possible. There we go. Oh, that was a bit small. So I can move it around and line it up with my workspace. There are two different methods of doing this in Canvas Workspace. One, you put 
a frame around this of a specific size. So for example, it could be 20 by 28.5 centimeters or something, but a specific size and you draw a specific size frame because that means you can print from your iPad, just print off the image, no problem. And then you have to scan it in with your scan and cut. And then you export an SVG file, again with that sized border on it. And then when you've got that, you simply transfer the scanned image to canvas, have your imported SVG on top of it and line up the frames. And if you do that, it makes it a lot easier. If you're not going to do that and you want to do print and cut, there is a little step which I will tell you about when I swap over to my laptop to do that part of it. But what I wanted to show you at the moment was how you go about the tracing. So I'm going to tap on another layer and you can have auto layers or manual. It's entirely your choice. I'm going to go to the tool wheel here and pick up one of my tools. Now, all these are infinitely variable. You can have the line width really thick or very thin. I'll put it a bit thicker than I would normally for this, just so you can see it. But bear in mind, when you export an SVG, all the lines, the SVG line, the cut line, as it were, is down the middle of whatever you've drawn. Okay, It doesn't go around the outside edges, it goes down the middle of it. You can alter the transparency, we don't want to do that at the moment, but you can also alter here what I like to call the wobble factor. It's line straightening, so you can have no line straightening or you can have 100%. If you've got 100%, you can do straight lines, no problem whatsoever. So I can do a line here and it will be straight. I can put another line across here. Now this isn't going to be very accurate because I'm doing this on the desk rather than holding my iPad, which I normally do but you get the idea. Now, one of the tools that it has, which is particularly nice, is the snap one, and it gives you different options. And I have got it set up to autocomplete. So when it detects that I'm near to the end of another line, it'll go, oh yeah, I wanna join on that, and it does. So it's really handy. So that would be how you do a straight line, but how do you do the curved lines? Now I can zoom into this really, really well. Now go to my line and I take it down to about 30%, something like that. Then I can draw my line like so. And it's a lot smoother than it would be if I had normally drawn it. And then if I want to have the straight lines again, I just swap over to straight and I can put these in and do that. Now I'm purposely not doing this very accurately because there's another function that I want to show you and that is the nudge. This is probably one of my favourite tools. You can move a line any way you like. You can shorten it, you can lengthen it, you can move the angle of it. If you have a curve it pushes it out like you're moving a string and you can move it back again if you want to. It's absolutely lovely. Now, what I tend to do when I am doing this is I will go through the entire drawing doing either straight lines or curved lines and then I'll swap to the other one. And then at the end of it, I'll zoom in really close and if there's anything that's out a bit too far that I really don't want, I'll go in with the nudge tool and repair it. So that's how you put your lines on. And it's really quite easy when you get used to this way of working to go pretty quickly and get your lines in without any hassle. So when this is finished, what you want to do is tap on your export and you choose your A4 SVG and you export. And then in my case, it will just ping it over to my laptop. Now you notice I've imported my design, but what it has done is it has resized it to fit within the lines. Now, in some cases, this may not bother you greatly. In other cases, you might think, well, actually, I don't want it to be resized that much. 
So there is a fudge that you can do to get rid of this. I'm just going to click on OK. And basically what you do is you set your mat to a bigger mat than you would normally be using. So I might set it to A3, for example. And I don't have an A3 printer, so this isn't an awful lot of use to me. Let me just switch off the registration marks a minute because they're a bit... Um, just a bit confusing. All right, I'm going to group that. Now this image here that was originally imported and resized is now 203.8 millimeters by 288.3. So you've lost a bit. You haven't lost a vast amount, but you have lost a bit. And what you can do is once you, if you import it with a larger mat, you can swap the mat round to a smaller one. So just put it onto the A4 section again. And if you wanted to, you could actually make that the proper size. So I could make it 21. Oops. <laughs> Not 21 millimetres, 210 millimetres. For some reason, it doesn't do centimetres, and I'm used to centimetres. OK, so I've actually resized that to the full size of the A4 because I know two things. Firstly, the print does not go to the edges, and I can print borderless, so that really isn't a problem. And I also know, most definitely, that the cut lines, if I'd put any on, would not be going over that red line, no matter what. Now, in some cases, you might find that you couldn't do that. And I recommend if you're doing pages of a design that has to be put together, a 3D design, that you check how big your biggest options are going to be. Because if it's too near the border, then you may not be able to do that. But then I can come in with my premium and show my registration marks and I can get away with it because I can always move everything around. I can take the whole lot, if I've grouped it, and move it slightly down if I needed to. And then I would send that to print as is and then do my print to cut. If you're not doing a print to cut, basically you're going to be relying on the placement of your border lines or the size of your A4 paper. And you're going to have to assume, if you're just going by the paper size, that everything is the correct size. If you printed a border on your design, however, then you will be able to know that whatever you do, you can match up that border size. If you select everything that's in that border and you then match it up with your print, you'll be in the right place. Instead of exporting your design as an A4 size, go for the design size option. And that way you will just get the frame around your design. You won't get the extra paper part of it. And therefore it's easier to make sure that the sizes line up. So that's how I've done it. And I believe that Concepts now has Android, I think. I think they have one for Android now as well. I do not know how good or otherwise it is because I've not used it. But the one for the iPad is magnificent. Between that and Procreate, I can do pretty much anything that I want to do. And uh, I use both of them quite a lot. So there we go. I hope you found that useful and I will see you again soon. Take care now.